Hey there, quirky people. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings finally hit theaters this week. We do not know what we expected from the film, but we certainly did not anticipate the explosive welcome we got. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is an endearing coming-of-age story. Shaun is the titular protagonist of the story, or so the writers will have you believe. Although Simu Liu does have some amazing work here, we believe that this movie is not about him. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, you can hear me. The true focus of the movie was in fact his father, Wenwu, who was played by Tony Liang. Shu Wenwu is being posed as the legendary Iron Man villain known only as the Mandarin. Yes, that Mandarin. Bloody hell, bloody hell. We were first made aware of his existence in Marvel's one-shot film, All Hail the King. Up until then, the leadership of the Ten Rings was up in the air. The terrorist organization had been a part of the MCU since Iron Man, but we never really saw the Mandarin himself. Then in Iron Man 3, we got the infamous Ben Kingsley switch up. This is the Mandarin? I know, it's, it's, it's embarrassing. Hi, Trevor. Trevor Sledger. This only worked to anger the fans even further. Oh, I get it. Ow, that hurt. I get it. I get it. There was an entire fiasco on how Marvel had betrayed the fans. You're making me beat up Chris. People felt that the Ten Rings as shown in the comics would never be a part of the larger MCU. And the Mandarin switch of Iron Man 3 further solidified their suspicions. Tony, I swear to God, I'm going to blow his face off. But when the one-shot came out, suddenly there was hope for the real Mandarin to emerge. Sadly, Iron Man passed away during the events of Avengers Endgame. This was the point that MCU fans once again thought that we might never see the true Mandarin. But then Marvel came up with the announcement of Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings. And suddenly, there was hope again. Hope to see the real Mandarin wreak real havoc with his powerful Ten Rings from the comics. But after seeing the movie, we have come to the conclusion that both Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings are totally unrecognizable from the books. While the artifacts featured in the movies are definitely ten circular bands of great power, they are a far cry from the Ten Rings of the original Mandarin. I'm going to break it down piece by piece for the viewers. So here you go. Let's start with the origins. The first major difference between the Ten Rings of the comics and the movie is their origin. The rings were founded by the Mandarin in a crashed spaceship, which was full of alien beings. These aliens looked like a fusion between dragons and men. They had a peculiar look and had even more peculiar tech. They are called the Mukluans and reside on planet Muklu 4. Axon Carr was an explorer who used the rings of power as a battery for their interstellar engine. Earth science could not explain the functionality of the rings, but as soon as the Mandarin saw them, he knew that he must steal them. The man is as power hungry in the comics as in the movies. Regardless, he slaughtered Axon Carr with his sword and seized the rings for himself. The ship crash landed in a place called the Valley of Spirits. The residents of this place had already severely wounded Axon Carr. So the Mandarin's plunder wasn't really hard fought. On the other hand, the movie does not go into much detail about the origin of the Ten Rings. It left the origins of the rings to be explored in future films, as we were only told that the rings were found by Wenwu somewhere. Maybe in a tomb, a crater, or some old ruins. The movie focuses more on their functionality than their origin. The rings are also much bigger in the movie. They are almost like bracelets or bangles rather than rings. In fact, they actually change sizes to fit the wearers. Okay, now let's move on to the power of the Ten Rings. In the movie, the Ten Rings seem to grant immortality to their wearer. This was not an ability they possessed in the comics. Moreover, the MCU version seems to be far more docile than the comics version. Don't get us wrong, the Ten Rings are capable of causing a lot of destruction but they cannot hold a candle to the destructive power of the Rings of Power. Regardless, the movie version seems to possess a large degree of kinetic energy. They seem to store energy and allow their wearer to manipulate that energy as they deem fit. This can only be done on a small scale, but Wenwu shows us that you can get creative with it. He uses the rings to jump great distances by smashing into the ground. He uses them as shields or melee weapons by braiding energy around them and swinging them. He even uses the rings as projectiles that he throws at his opponents and calls back before having people realize what really happened. These rings are a symbol of power and the fear. They also seem to slow his aging down to a point of negligence. However, the ten rings of power are much different in the comics. The ten cylinders act as actual cylindrical rings that the Mandarin wore on his fingers. Each of them housed the soul and the spirit of an ancient warrior. This in turn granted each ring with a specific power and a separate pseudo-consciousness. 
None of this was shared in the movie, but we know this because the Mandarin has used them multiple times in the books. So let's talk about each ring's powers one by one. First up, we have the Remaker. It is the Matter Rearranger ring, worn on the right thumb. This ring allowed the Mandarin to manipulate the atomic and molecular structures of matter. However, it cannot transmute elements or affect objects encased in force of energy fields. The next one we've got is Influence. Also called the Impact Beam Ring, it is worn on the right index finger. This ring allowed the Mandarin to generate and project various beams of concussive force. The third is Spin. It is the Vortex Beam Ring that's worn on the right middle finger. It causes the air to move around at high speeds in a vortex. The vortex can be used as an offensive weapon or to make yourself or other objects levitate. Number four is Spectral. It is the Disintegration Beam Ring worn on the right ring finger. This ring allowed the Mandarin to project a beam of energy, which causes inanimate objects to be disintegrated. It needs to be recharged for 20 minutes after each use. Number 5 is the Nightbringer. Also known as the Black Light Ring, it is worn on the right pinky finger. It allowed the Mandarin to create an area of darkness, and no light source can breach this darkness. Now coming to the left hand, ring number 6 is called Diamonic. It is the white light ring worn on the left thumb. This ring allowed the user to generate and manipulate various forms of electromagnetic energy. The seventh is incandescence. It's the flame blast ring that's worn on the left index finger. It allowed the mandarin to project blasts of infrared that produced flames or ignited certain objects. Number eight is the lyre. Also called the mento intensifier ring, this one's worn on the left ring finger. It magnified the mandarin's psionic energies. It allowed him to mentally manipulate the thoughts and actions of others. Number 9. Lightning. It's the Electro Blast Ring which was worn on the left middle finger. This ring allowed the Mandarin to project blasts of electrical energy. Now finally, the tenth one is Zero. It is the Ice Blast Ring which the Mandarin wore on the left pinky finger. It allowed him to project waves of intense cold and ice. He could even trap his foes in ice blocks and sheets. It's needless to say that the Ten Rings of Power seem much more powerful than the version we got. The MCU obviously had to nerf them down to make them feel different from the Infinity Stones. Interestingly, only the Mandarin was capable of controlling them all at once. And he could even do that from the other side of the world. After continuous usage of the rings for several years, they adapted to him. But another interesting fact about them is that all the rings chose their different new hosts at a later point in time. The movie showed that all 10 rings carried similar power and worked together for one particular user. Wen Wu gave the rings to Shang-Chi. Even before that, we saw that Li and Shang-Chi both gained control of them. They did that by using the martial arts of the gods. And gaining control of their movements, they showed that true balance was more important than raw power. Okay, that's all for now. These were all the differences between the 10 rings in the movies and the comics. We hope you have learned something today. Give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to check out some more fun content on our channel. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!